Okay, hello and welcome back to our Pillars of Eternity All Challenge Modes Active Playthrough brought to you by GameAnyone.com Let's see how we fare today after a really fucking grueling experience the other night I have to say it's sad that the combat in this game, or you could actually call the gameplay, so wonky, so primitive you could say, especially considering tactical RPGs like uh, Divinity Original Sin. Holy shit. Well, I can actually get a lot closer. I'll keep that in mind for fights. Center the inn. The floorboards are sticky with spills that no one has bothered to clean. I'll take care of it. Some kind of brown slop is congealing in these dishes. It smells burnt. Gods keep you. Oh, greetings and welcome to the Black Hound Inn. The keeper bows her head curtly. Please sit where you like. Would you like a drink, a room? We have two available at the moment. I'm afraid we can offer... We can't offer much by the way of a good meal today, she sighs. Unless you're fond of cold porridge. I... Would like to see what you have for sale. Aloth opens his mouth but seems to reconsider. Nothing for me, thanks. Of course, we're running a little short on goods these days, but we ought to have more soon. And as long as she has money. Recruit other ventures. This is great. So I can have six people in my employ, you could say. A level one adventure. Let me see. Mm, imagine that. I wonder. Okay, I'm not going to hire anyone. I doubt very much I'll get attacked in town. So I'll talk to people, maybe I can recruit more like I did with him. Once I have six, I'll sell all that shit. Spoons hang by the fire coated in brownish gunk. Orlan Servant.
the fangs. As I've stated, that much is known about this group by the world at large because they don't welcome outsiders into their numbers. While many believe they are xenophobic and openly hostile to all who enter Ere Glanfath, the truth doesn't seem to be as broad or deadly, and certainly not that simple. There are many places in Ere Glanfath that could be called magical or sacred to the Glanfathans. One legend states that the Enguidans, who had suddenly abandoned their kingdom and left for places unknown, took the time to guide the ancient Glanfathan tribes into the now vacant land. The Glanfathans were gifted with a fertile area as their own homeland, but in return for this gift, an oath was required. The Glanfathans were instructed to protect the Enguidan ruins until such time as they could return and reclaim them. They were required to swear that no living person, including the Glamphalans themselves, would be permitted entrance into the ruins. Differing accounts suggest that Glamphalans were promised more than homeland, that the Enwidans were the favored people of the gods, and that keeping their oaths would confer similar benefits to the Glamphalans in the end. Oddly, the rules don't seem to apply as strictly within the orders of the Twin M Elms, a site built upon a strange concentration of unwidden structures, but it would seem that it is unlikely a selective oversight on the part of the Glanfans and more probably part of the terms of the original compact. In any case, the Glanfans came to take their role as guardians seriously, revert the sites and developing rituals designed to protect and guard the ruins. Over time, these rituals became rote formality to some, as much as legend and superstition as any other stories passed down. This is not to say that Glanfan ceased all attempts to uphold their oath. See the section out the Ten Years Treatise in my book called Azmet Har Dread, but the intense devotion to the oath tended to vary from time to time tribe to tribe and clan to clan. Not so with the Fangs, however. The Fangs are a group joined not by ties of kinship or even community, but of belief. Of all the groups in Erglanfath, it is the Fangs who seem most intent in keeping the promise to their ancestors. Just because their fanaticism and zeal are not widely sweeping as many things does not make them any less dangerous. The Fangs are not known to reason with those they view as transgressors. If they feel you have in any way violated the sanctity of a sacred place, their judgment is swift and exact. Reports of the Fangs attacks can be found in records dating back to the first colonial explorations of Air Glanfath and even the smallest of perceived slights can be worthy of execution. The order itself seems to consist mainly of hunters, where they are recruited as skilled hunters or trained once they gain access to the order it is unknown. For all accounts, once they join the fangs, hunting game of all second beyond patrolling air gland fat and protecting the ruins. So it is the author's opinion that it is the former. So maybe we were attacked by those guys. The most common Valyrian coin found in Deerwood is the silver lush fish. So named for its resemblance to the scales of a fish. Great. Storm Bright's blade and Selenia Bertribo. Maybe people I can recruit. Let's talk to them. Okay, what the hell? As you near, you feel a vibrant story contained in the essence of this woman's soul. Voices from its past seem to call to you. Let's reach. Holy fuck. You see a woman is emptying her satchel onto her bed, taking stock of her inventory. Potions, bandages, tinctures and herbs are scattered throughout her room haphazardly. She wipes her lips, head tilted to the side, considering she begins to repack one item after another, careful deliberation undercut by the shaking of hands. Each item has a clearly marked place, but no matter how she repacks it, she isn't satisfied. 
the shrinking worsens as she empties it out once more, one hand left to held to her mouth. The tears ache from her eyes as she gives up all semblance of order and shops everything she can in the satchel, grabbing it and running out of the Vera house. Strengthening her back as she walks to the docks, chin high, eyes hard and red, a gangly youth elf offers his condolences, but she can see him for the ocean ahead of her. She wanders the docks, offering her services as a doctor to any who will listen, anyone heading out on high tide. Less than an hour later, she watches her childhood disappear in the distance, a tiny speck of a land, and tries not to jump. Okay, what about this guy? Okay, let's see. You see a group of young men standing around a makeshift practice target. This man stands in the middle of them, explaining the construction and use of a bow. He holds it up, pointing out of each part as he speaks about it and what it does. When he talk, walks away from the target, telling them to remain where they are, he takes his place out 200 feet away. He carefully lines up a shot, explaining what he's doing as he does, and lets the arrow fly. It hits the target dead center, much to the surprise and delight of the boys near it. He smiles, walking toward the boys talking out the proper stance and how to most effectively hold a bow. A noise comes from the tree line near their practice venue and he stops scanning the woods, blue eyes squinting against the sun. A shadow moves, making its way through the forest behind them. He draws an arrow and lines up the shot, carefully tracking the motion of the hidden creature. Losing the arrow, he wastes no time and quickly grabs another. The voice spin, watching the arrow fly into the forest, immediately lost among the trees. There is sudden explosive moment in the undergrowth as a deer erupts from the tree line, running across the edge of the clearing. The boys laugh, turning to joke with the man out his lousy shot. They stop talking, seeing him holding the boy, uh, bow and leading the deer with a knocked arrow. They drop to the ground as he loses the last arrow, which flies through and strikes the deer right behind its shoulder, piercing its heart and lungs and dropping it dead almost immediately. The boys stare at the deer for a few seconds and then slowly turn to look at the man, newfound respect in their eyes. He smiles again and breathes a quiet sigh of relief. Okay. What the hell? How may I help? Out there. I'll take care of it. That was strange. Carouser, what? Deskop Najib, Shane Malthurian, and Ina Shamin. Well, those are lovely stories, but. Lockpicks required. Two. Cramped behind the hooks is a drawing that shows Eodas and Lord Rerig in a compromising position. Okay. Deerwood Part 1 Early Colonial History. Other land has such a wild and bloody recent history. From colony to palatinate to free republic, the Deerwood has undergone a trial by fire to emerge as a powerful force in the Eastern Reach. Deerwood his history actually begins in Eder in 2602 A.I. Ediri explorers returned from a journey across the ocean with tales of treasures they had found. They had discovered countless ruins scattered through the forests as well as plains to the north of the trees that would be perfect for growing borthless. There was a problem, however. The lockers were hostile and there was potential for conflict. The fair coning of Adir, first king, 
knew that this was too good an opportunity to pass up and sent more explorers to scout and map the area. Exploration continued over the next 20 years as small groups of explorers traveled back and forth between Eidir and the New World with a handful of colonies setting up small camps to establish a base for the explorers to work out. Conflicts with the locals who the Edernians learned are called the Glamfadans were rare but frequent enough for the fair coning to send a small squadron of guards to help protect his citizens. These guards established a central base on a river in the western section of the woods. The settlement would eventually become the city of Deerford, upon which the modern-day village of the same name is presently built. Once the base was established, the first permanent Edarian settlements began north and west of the Bale River. Over the next three years, thousands of Aedirians made their trek to a from Aether to his new land. The Glamfadans, who seemed to revere the ruins scattered through the forest, caused a few problems with some of the settlements, especially those founded near the ruins themselves. These were easily taken care of by the colonists with the help of the Imperial Guard. The Aedirians, in order to further their own foothold in the area, reduced the cost of production in an attempt to keep the Glamfadan population under control, started making slaves out of any Glamfadans captured during the uprisings. This resulted in great increase in tension between the two groups. With the population of the area growing, an official governmental structure was established by Ferconing. He appointed several heralds to preside over the land and assigned them things to help run their territories, and they called the new Grefam the Deerwood. Deerwood Deerford remained the center of the Imperial Guard, but the settlement of Per Wold Gulf, New Dunwirt, was the true seat of power. Sitting at the edge of the ocean forest fertile farmland and a river that runs from the coast to a white marsh, settlers flocked to the area, hoping to establish names for themselves. Adrian began to spread across the new land. Okay, I'm not going to read any more books. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Yeah, why not? Let's take it all. Woo! Recovery speed, what the hell does that thing mean? Give me a moment. I want to see what recovery is the amount of time that a character spends between actions. Longer actions result in disproportionately longer recovery. Okay. I don't really care. Let's give him better armor. What? It's actually worse. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> it looks mad. They actually lose their hair, great. The rapier. Okay. All right. Let's talk to these guys. Okay, in all honesty, I don't really care about that. Their personal is. If, I'm, if I cannot talk to them, I don't give a shit. The personal stories are of no interest to me. 
There is bones are covered with tiny marks. Okay. So, where should I go? Explore everything. Maybe I'll get a free companion. Offer. Okay, I think that's a stealing they are telling me. Keeping an eye out. A dear one woman is standing in front of a fireplace, humming a quiet tune to herself, or perhaps to her unborn child, for she is clearly pregnant. She turns her head as lightly as you enter. Welcome. Well, finally, I was starting to think. The woman makes a startled noise as she turns around and sees you. Oh, I'm sorry, I was expecting someone else. She gives you a cautious smile, and I'll help you. I just arrived at in Gilded Vale. I thought I, well, I would get to know the locals. Where are you with the caravans? She looks at you hopefully. Master Odemas by chance? Yes, I was. I'm afraid the rest of the caravan was killed. Ofra covers her mouth with a hand, eyes wide with horror. For a few moments, ah, maybe this is the sister. She can manage nothing but a uh, strangled, voiceless gasping, her eyes brimming with tears. I knew, I told her it was dangerous path to take. Kaliska was always so certain she could make take on any danger. Oh, Fresnifs, oh, my poor sister, I'm sorry, stranger. I just cannot believe she's gone. If only I hadn't called her here, if I hadn't written to her, she might still be alive somewhere. Ofra's face crumples and a solitary tear slides down her cheek. Why did you send for her? Ofra wipes at her eyes. I am worried about the baby, about the legacy. I'm I told Kaliska as much as I could, but uh, all I know is that for a long time now, every child born in the Vale has been soulless, empty. It's happened to so many mothers, and Lord Redrick has exiled all of them, calling it a sign of the gods' disfavor. She sniffs, with my hat or gone, I don't know how I would manage if I lost my home too. I hope Kaliska could help me. They say Ranga, my old midwife, knows a way to prevent a child being hollowborn, but she moved south to Anslok Compass two seasons ago. The journey is f too far for me, I can make it as I am, but I don't have anyone else now. With Kaliska gone, more tears round down her face, please, can you help me? I'll find her for you. Ofra blinks, eyes wide open. You will? Oh, God bless you. Here, I'll give you coin to pay her with. You needn't troll yourself with that. I think it's a drink she fashions out of well. I'm not sure, but it shouldn't be too much of a burden to carry back. Anslok Compass is what we call the lagoon to the south. You will be able to cross the wilds to get there. That's what keeps me from trying myself. She claps her hand together. Thank you again, truly. You will be saving us both. She sets a hand on her stomach, smiling through her tears. Let's eat the cat.
This war dog eared book the statue trials upon the Segla Sea. There is an edge illustration in find Benathian. Okay. Next place. Remember that. Let's come here. Stop this. I want to talk to them. How may I help? What's this bullshit with the soul? Okay, I need to know what the hell I'm supposed to do. I actually don't have any quests. So I don't understand. Let's go to his house. of sun is half empty. Ingrid, this man and woman appear to have been deep in conversation, working at closing two bungling satchels. They move to embrace, but then the woman notices your approach and poses her smile faltering a little. Greetings. Can we help you? She looks at to her companion, brows following with confusion. Do you know this woman, Nanton? Nanton shakes his head. I don't believe so. Was there something you wanted, stranger? You two seem to be in a hurry. Yes, I imagine so, Ingrid laughs. We're packing for a trip, actually. I've been meaning to visit Defiance Bay. And she looks at Nanton. Well, in truth, I think I've had my fill of this town. Nanton reaches to take her hand. It's time for some new scenery, he says. Is there anything you can tell me about this place? Ingrid smiles wryly. Only that you will want to be moving on as soon as you can. You will have seen the tree, I imagine, but the rot grows deeper. If you were looking for work, I'll say you have a better chance of it elsewhere. We're head for the fine base by ourselves. Okay. Don't mind if I take your money. <laughs> Good day to you. A 
It seems I will have to hire that guy. What the hell am I supposed to do? I'm, I, I'm sick. Then I come here to search for someone to cure me. That's pretty sure I, I have. We know there is more grain in there, Trumbull. We won't settle for scraps while you grow fat on your own crops. On our crops. A baffled shouting emerges from inside the mill. The first of you drunkards comes through the door, gets a shot between the eyes. God, hear me, Seymour, I'll put you down like a dog. Come away from now, for now lads, we will be back troll and we'll have fair prices or by the flame we will have a reckoning. Okay. Let's see if he opens for us. Holy shit! The urban man stands before you, his relatively stocky yield suggesting a life of labor. His face is pale and drawn, his eyes wide. Behind him, a younger man and woman exchange worried glances. The miller raises a club as you enter, it shakes violently in his grip. Get back if you value your life. Hold on, I'm not here to hurt anyone. The miller hesitates, then lowers the club a fraction. Who are you? Is Senor roping foreigners into his little clu crusade now? <laughs> My name is Celeste. I have only just arrived in Gilded Bale. Trumbull shakes his head. You picked a bad time to come visiting. Gilded Bales had all its shrine ca scrapped off. Just a bit dog hip now. But Senor thinks he's king of it. They are all mad. Who's Senor? The dwarf, the one standing out there spreading lies among the villagers. Bastard's been here for decades and he hasn't gotten any kinder with time. What was all that ruckus outside? Trumbull shakes his head. Where to begin? Semur whipped them up into a froth, going on out the grain stores. Claims I've hidden away most of it. All I do with the grain is sell it. I can't create it out of thin air. I can't hand it out for free. I pay the farmers for the crops they bring in and I sell what comes out of the mill. Most of it goes to the Black Hound or on the west side of town for ale and Senor and his lot sure don't mind that part. You take a look on the fields on the way into town, the crops blighted. And most of what I'm getting from the farmers, Trumbull gestures to his axe and containers, it's gone off, rotted through. I can't pay top prices for blighted wheat, I've, and I've barely got enough good grain to go around. Senior's howling after things he has no right to. I see! I have other questions. I'll be going. No, holy shit, that's a stealing. Can I talk to someone else? Where's a good man? He's always done right. I'm sure Fire can explain it better. Okay, let's get out of here. I have no reason to get into a quarrel between two private citizens. So where next? 
The Black Hammer Smithery. Cannot venture forth while in combat. Hi. Curses. What is it? Curse your eyes. No prisoners. Of course. I don't know what I should do in this game. The problem is the combat. I think I'll, unless people demand it, I'm going to end on this playthrough. Uh, the game is just to to too difficult, you could say, but not because not because of the way it is scripted. I'm sure you can. You can, uh, I, I mean, not the script designed. You can make another run, but not the way I play games. Not the way I enjoy playing games. The combat is too simplistic, you could say, for this sort of isometric mm, yeah I isometric view if it were action based then I will have problems as it mm, as I could evade people but this isometric view you cannot escape or at least in this game, I don't see how you can. And without the ability to escape, I will die. That's how I survive. I, I am a survivor and a coward in games. That's how I make it through. And this game does not cater at all to that idea. And there you go. One simple misclick has killed me twice already once with that uh, 
with that uh, mm, trap that's right around the corner and one Swiss with uh, the stealing so if people tell me yes Darth please continue I'll pick up from here and, and see what I can do but it is obvious that this game is not what, what I was expecting. I was expecting something more along the lines of the Unity original scene where the combat allows you to as a tactical turn-based combat it allows you to actually think. This, this is the worst of both worlds because it works in real time but it is complex enough that you actually have to think. Pausing is part of the business, you could say. It's it's ingrained, but I cannot pause. Or I don't want to pause. I could, but I don't want to. Because that's annoying. That's some, some of the things I really hated about the old uh, Infinity Engine games. Pause, 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 pause every five seconds. So... Sadly, I have to say I'm done with the game, because if small mistakes, like misclicking something, can kill me, and I am unable, I, f I feel I am unable to adapt to this sort of real-time fighting with complex RPG mechanics. You either have simplistic tactics in uh, in a, an action oriented gameplay or you have very complex tactics on a turn based a scenario that's how I see it there is no middle ground if you go middle ground then you get fucked because a simplistic approach in a turn based co uh, game it will be boring and then you have what what it's here a complex uh, system on real time it just fucks you over because you don't have the required uh, the required let's say how is it the actions per click or clicks per seconds whatever you can you don't have the reaction time to actually fight properly without pausing and uh, that makes the game too punishing for another rules so I'll leave it up to the people in in uh, in uh, YouTube and gameanyone.com if you want me to continue this game please tell me because I am not feeling up to the task mm, to be completely honest with you so uh, that's it for today something else I don't like that yeah basically inability to escape as I said I am a coward that's how I survive that's my first instinct not not rushing and fight but run away but uh, this game apparently does not allow for that and I can tell you it uh, if I didn't run away no no game I've played I would have beaten in another roost I need the ability to run away otherwise I will be fucked because I am not a brawler I am a scraper so I will be moving on and uh, hopefully someone more skilled than me will pull it off 
so thank you very much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time either in this game if you demand it or in another franchise until then long live the empire goodbye